Well, good evening. Praise God. Amen. Welcome for healing for today. This is Apostle Clayton Potter. Amen. So glad to be in your homes preaching and teaching the word of God. God is doing some powerful things in the lives of the people of God, and we're so glad to have you to tune in. Those of you that are tuning in live via Android, iPhone, all technology devices, we appreciate you, amen, for what you're doing here because we believe God has a powerful word. Those that are watching us from the Miss Lou, uh, Mississippi, Vidalia area, thank God for you on Cable One. Those that are listening to us by shortwave and radio across our third world countries, we welcome you to what we call healing for today. I'm just excited today knowing that God has so much planned for all of us, particularly in the area of healing. And we do appreciate all what you're doing. And thank you so much for all those that are partners with us in different areas. Thank you for your gifts and your donations, amen, that you have sent in to make this broadcast to be uh, alive and powerful and definitely uh, effective in your particular local area or region that you're in. And so we count our, our glory before God today. Uh, I want to encourage you to go to uh, www.clintonpotters.org. That's www.clintonpotters.org. Go up, amen, on our website. See some exciting things that we're doing in the area. Amen. I, God has already commissioned me, amen, to bring the gospel of healing uh, to the people of God in these last days. So our announcer will have the information on the screen there for you. That's www.clintonpotters.org. Or you can also email us at clintonpottersministries at gmail.com. Uh, love for you to go ahead and tell us about some testimonies, uh, some insights, and what God is doing into your life. So we count in the blessings. So once again, thank you so much for what you're doing to make this broadcast to be alive in your particular area. I want to get into a subject today that I think will be beneficial to all of us. We call this healing for today because I am under an assignment, rather a commission by God, to bring a revelation of the healing power of God to the people of God in these last days. It is the will of God for people to live a long and successful life. And we have to do it according to the word of God. And, and I know according to the word of God that God has answers to every problem uh, that you're facing, every problem. There's solutions that he has according to the word of God. And so today I want to talk about renewing your mind for healing, renewing your mind for healing. Uh, because I believe unless a man or a woman of God will renew his or her mind for healing, then it's going to be very challenging them for them to have faith to believe. Remember, the will of God is not known until you have faith for You cannot believe God for something that you don't have faith for. And many times people in life, they can't believe God for healing because they don't know that it is God's will for them to be healed. There are so many erroneous teachings that are out there today that said God put sickness and disease on us to try us and to teach us something. Uh, some teaching says that, well, you never know what God's really going to do. Sometimes they hear you and sometimes they don't. And so that type of teaching or information or fallacy that comes from error only is important to our soul, which causes us to think a certain way. And because we think this way, our believing is wrong. Uh, ultimately, our destiny is impacted by wrong information. And so I'm going to Romans 12 too, which is going to be our foundational scripture here, because we want to talk about renewing the mind for divine healing. Once again, renewing the mind for divine healing. Romans 12, chapter verse 2 said it like this, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So notice that the Bible talks about don't be conformed. What well, the word conform means don't be adapted to the superficial customs or thinking processes of this world. So the Bible talks about uh, uh, two types of healing. Uh, there is a healing from the secular perspective, and there's a healing according to the Bible. All of us, amen, that are watching us by broadcast or listening to us by radio realize that we were growing up in a society, and based upon your experiences, you were taught concerning healing from a secular perspective. Now, I must admit, amen, that doctors are here to assist us and to keep us alive. So I'm no, in no way crediting doctors at all. I thank God that God has placed in them to be what I call a ram in the bush until our faith can get there. However, there is a better way than what we're doing concerning divine healing. 
And so the Bible talks about, he said, don't be conformed to this world. There is a system that the world teaches concerning healing. Well, they, you know, we, they teach that in order for you to be healed, you're going to have to take some medicine. And this medicine is going to be able to correct one problem. But you and I know who've been living such a long time to realize that to correct one problem, uh, unfortunately, has side effects on the other. And so I don't believe that's God's will, perfect will, that you happen to go through that in your particular body. And so the Bible says, be not conformed to this world. So you must understand, unless a person uh, transforms his or her mind, then they will continue to operate based upon the knowledge and the information that they received prior to their conversion. And so the Bible talks about, he says, no longer conform, no longer follow the thought processes that you learn in this world. I always tell people this, find out what the world has taught you, Line it up with the Bible. See, does it line up with the Word of Almighty God? If it does not line up with the Bible, then guess what? We're going to have to go with God. That's what the Scripture says, I rather will obey God than man. And so the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Notice the Bible talks about there is a transformation that comes along when you begin to alter the thought process that's in your mind. Particularly, we're talking about healing. We want you to be able to renew your mind as it relates to divine healing. Remember the information that you have in your mind as of today is based upon experiences, based upon things that you were taught, based upon things that you may have shared, so forth and so on. And if that information does not line up with the Bible, it could become detrimental to what God is trying to do in your life. The Bible said it like this, the traditions of men has caused the Word of God to be non-effect. And what happened many times, there is a traditional perspective to Bible healing. There is a secular perspective, but there is a traditional perspective of, of divine healing. And the traditional perspective is, well, you know, healing died a long time ago when the disciples died. You know, sometimes God will heal you, and sometimes you don't. You really never know what God wants you to do. You know, God is so busy in heaven, he's trying to run this whole universe, so he really doesn't have time of concerning your physical body. Well, that's the traditions of men. The traditions of men is information that's got from men who were not inspired by the Holy Ghost that came, came from reasoning and factual information that came from their mind, and they came up with this conclusion. Well, you're going to see as we renew our mind in the Word of God that the Bible doesn't say anything like this. He says in Romans 12 and 2, no longer be conformed to this world, be ye transformed, what? By the renewing of your, what? Mind that you may prove. See, God wants you better prove his will for your life concerning divine healing. What do you do? You get in the word of God. You allow the word of God to alter your thought process. You allow the word of God to alter the way you're thinking concerning healing. When that happens, there is a transformation that would happen in your mind. You begin to act differently. You begin to make wise decisions. And ultimately, you will get the results that you need, which is what? Divine healing. So the Bible talks about transforming. So let us get in the Word of God here tonight so that we can get our mind transformed and get new information concerning divine healing for your life. Well, we're going to start with one of our passages of Scripture here that we've always talked about in times past. It's going to be Isaiah 53, verses 4 and verse 5. So let's renew our mind. Let's get our mind transformed. This is how we're going to do it. It's very practical in. Formation. I got to renew my mind because remember, when you go through things, you would always gravitate back to the most dominating thought that has risen in your mind. And if the dominating thought has nothing to do with the Word of God, then unfortunately, you have yielded yourself to knowledge that has nothing to do with the Word of God. So let's see what the Word of God says concerning divine healing. Isaiah 53 verse 4 said, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded, verse 5 said, But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes 
we are healed. Notice the Bible talks about in verse 4, Isaiah 53, verse 4. The Bible says, surely he borne our griefs. When you look at the griefs, G-R-E-F-S, the word griefs in the literal Hebrew translation means sicknesses, weaknesses, and disease. Sicknesses, weaknesses, and disease. So if I read that scripture again, it says, surely he has borne my sicknesses, my weaknesses, my disease. The word born, B-O-R-N-E, means he carried it away, my sicknesses, my weaknesses, and my disease. Who did it? Jesus carried my sicknesses. He carried my weaknesses, and he carried my disease. And then the Bible said, and he carried my sorrows. Well, if you look at that word sorrows from the surface level, your mind can almost gravitate that he's talking about somebody that's been sad. But the word sorrows in the literal translation of the Hebrew Bible talks about pain. So anything that has called pain, guess what? Jesus carried it away. So when I'm renewing my mind with the word of God, I realized, first of all, Jesus took my sickness, he took my disease, he took my weaknesses, and he took my pain. Guess what he did? He took it away. Away from who? Away from me. So as I renew my mind, I begin to realize, guess what, Christ, Jesus, you have taken this away from me. So if you have taken this away from me, why do I have to bear it? See, as you renew your mind, you're going to think differently. As you think differently, you're going to act differently. As you act differently, you're going to speak differently. And so the Bible talks about Jesus carried it away. What did he carry? Over 2,000 years ago, he took it in his body. He carried every sickness, past, present, and future tense. He took it away. Why? So that you don't have to carry every pain, every sickness, every disease that's trying to attack your body. Jesus has already taken it away from you. Glory to God. See, we have to alter our mindset because if I don't alter my mindset, then I'm thinking, oh, Jesus didn't carry my sickness. Jesus didn't carry my disease. So going against a popular a, a, a belief system where God puts sickness and disease on you. Well, according to this scripture, that wouldn't be the truth. Well, you said, well, when I experienced this a long time ago, I was sick and I believe God put it on me. Not according to this word. See, notice here, when you line up your thinking according to the Bible, then guess what? Your thinking has to line up with the word. Your thinking has to submit itself according to the word of Almighty God. Verse 5 said, but he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. And according to the scripture, with his stripes, we are healed. So as I renew my mind, how do I renew my mind? As I read the scripture, I begin to say, you know what? Jesus, you took it, my sickness, my disease, my weaknesses, and my pain away from me. According to Isaiah 53, 5, with your stripes, we are healed. The Bible said there were 39 stripes that Jesus took on that cross. He was whipped to, to a pulp. In other words, the Bible talks about that when they just got through beating Jesus, he did not even resemble a man. His body was so altered to the degree he didn't resemble a man. But every stripe that he took in his body, he took it for you and I so that we don't have to live the rest of our life with sickness and disease and pain in our body. Guess what you're doing? You're renewing your mind. And as you renew your mind, you say, my God, if Jesus took this for me, I don't have to take it. Notice how the renewing of your mind begins to prove what is God's perfect will for your life. Glory to God. Now, I'm going to Isaiah 55 for a moment because I want to bring something out. Isaiah 55 uh, uh, verse 7 is where we're going to right now because we're talking about renewing your mind for divine healing. The Bible says in Isaiah 55 verse 7, he says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your what? Ways, my ways, says the Lord. Verse 9 says it like this. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts 
then your thoughts. So, so we see here, according to Isaiah 55 here, the Bible says our thoughts are not God's thoughts. Well, someone takes that scripture and says, well, you know, preacher, the Bible just said God thinks higher than them. That is correct. So therefore, our thoughts are not his thought. That is correct. But he's talking about the wicked man. If you look at verse 7, it says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought. The reason why the unrighteous has wicked ways is because they have unrighteous thoughts. Note he said, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Then he goes on to say that uh, let him return to God. And he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Well, who is he talking to in this passage of Scripture? He's talking to the unrighteous guy. He's talking to the guy that doesn't think like him, that doesn't think like him. You say, well, his, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. That is correct. But Jesus has given us the infallible, incorruptible, unadulterated Word of Almighty God, which is the very thoughts of God. So when he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, he's talking to the God who's unrighteous. He's talking to the guy who is thinking not according to the Bible. But he says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And when you start renewing your mind according to the Word of God, God will elevate your level of thinking. That's why there is a higher level of healing according to the Word of God. When you renew your mind, you're going to begin to think according to the Bible. And the Word of God said, you're his thoughts now are higher than the thoughts of the unrighteous man. He's higher than the thoughts of this world. So guess what? God left his thoughts to us. Well, what is his thoughts? His word. Did not Jeremiah said, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you. They're plans to prosper you, to give you hope, and to give you a future. That's what the Bible said. Well, how do I know the plan of God for my life? How do I know what God is thinking about me? He gave you that Bible, the one you have underneath your coffee table, the one you may need to dust off a little bit, glory to God. That big old thick one, about maybe about four inches thick there. You know that's the one I'm talking about. Your, his thoughts is in that Bible. But if you take that thoughts that are out the Bible and begin to put them in your mind, he, your thoughts now will become God's thoughts, glory to God. So therefore, your ways now will become God's way. And the Bible talks about when that happens, there's going to come an elevation like never before. Why? Because you're thinking in line with the word of Almighty God. And it's according to the word, we're thinking about God's thoughts according to healing. So let's go to Matthews 8, 17 now. Matthews 8, 17 is where we're going to. Because notice here, we just found out that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts for the unrighteous man, but we can have God's thoughts. So let's look at verse 17. What did he say concerning his thoughts? How does he want it to happen? So Matthews, the 8th chapter, verse 17 says it like this, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Notice this. This is God's thought, but his thought is higher than the thoughts of this world. It's higher than the thoughts of the unrighteous man. Notice this. He said that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet, saying, himself Himself is who? Jesus. He took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. So as I renew my mind on the word of God, it's God's thoughts now. So God's thoughts is higher than what this world is saying. So God's thoughts is higher than what the world is saying. Then God has a different plan for divine healing for you. So God's, thought, God's divine healing is totally different from secular a human healing is totally different. It's much higher. It's a higher system. That's why when the doctor gives up on you and say they can't do anything about it, my God, don't get discouraged because you got God's thoughts, which is higher than what they're saying. That's why the doctor's report is not the final say-so. That's why the Bible said, whose report will you believe? Glory to God. I believe the report of the Lord. His report says I'm healed. His report says 
says I'm filled. His report says, my God, I got victory. I'm telling you, I want to shout right here on TV. But I know I got to keep teaching the word of God. Because guess what, child of God? You have God's word, which is a higher way of living, a higher way of doing things. It is called divine healing according to the Bible. And if I will do it God's way, he will call long life to come unto me. Let's go to Psalms 91, verse 16. We're renewing our mind tonight according to the word of God. We are renewing the mind, our mind to alter our thinking so that we can get in line to believe what the word of God said. Psalms, one, uh, uh, Psalms 91, verse 16, which is the scripture I, I, I quote quite, quite frequently uh, because, amen, I'm laying up for me, amen, uh, what God has for me. The Bible says in Psalms 91, verse 6, he says, with long life, my God, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So notice, as I renew my mind, because remember, sickness and disease is trying to stop us from having long life. Oh, yes, it is. Sickness and disease is trying to stop you from accomplishing the will of God for your life. But the Bible has already given us a promise. He says, with long life, will I satisfy you? I'm going to show you my salvation. I'm going to show you my salvation. So now, as I renew my mind, renew it means I come and I begin to think about what God's Word says about healing, which is a higher level of doing. He's promised me long life. So you got to start going around and say, listen, well, long life will he satisfy me when a pain hits your body? Long life. Why? Because that pain, that sickness, and that disease is ultimately trying to stop the long, longevity of the life of God that God has promised to everyone that believe, glory to God. So long life, will he satisfy us? And then, so that's very, very powerful that we can go ahead and understand what the word of God said. Let's go to Proverbs 4. We're talking about renewing our mind for divine healing. Proverbs, the fourth chapter uh, here. Glory to God. We're going to look at verse 5. Uh, glory to God. Proverbs 4, uh, verse, uh, matter of fact, we're going to go to verse 4. Proverbs 4, verse 4, he says, He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my word. That's Proverbs 4 and 4. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my what? Commandments and what? Live. Now, notice the Bible just telling us how to live. Well, how are we going to live? Keep his commandments. That's what the Bible just said. He says, retain my word, give attention to my word, obey my word, and you will do what? You will live. Did not Psalms 91, 16 say, with long life will I satisfy you and I will show you my salvation? Well, how God's going to give you long life? It's going to come through the word of God. So when God promised you long life, you cannot have long life without having the word. It's the word of God. He can, he's the only one, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God, the king of kings, and the Lord of one, is the Lord of Lord, is the only one that can promise you long life. So what is how he's going to promise long life? He give us his word. Proverbs 4 said, he taught me also and said unto me, let my heart, let my heart retain these words. What words? The word of God. Keep my commandments. You'll live. How are you going to live? With the word of God. How are you going to live longevity? With the word of God. Every time sickness trying to attack you, you're going to live. Why? Because you got the word of God. Glory to God. That's Proverbs 4, verse 4. My God, we're going to go on down to another thing here. Proverbs 4, verse 20. Proverbs 4, 20. See, what we're doing is we are altering our mindset tonight. We are altering how we're thinking about long life. Proverbs 4, verse 20 says, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my saying. Verse 21, let them not depart from thy, light, uh, from thy eyes. Verse 21, keep them in the midst of thine heart. Verse 22, for they are life. My God. For they are life unto those that find them. They go to life again and help to all their flesh. Man of God, 
woman of God, do you not realize that when you're keeping God's word, the word of God has the ability of God to provide light to your body. Just like medicine you take to correct the problem that's in your body, there is a medicine that comes from God's word. That's why he said when you keep the word, you will live. Why? Because the word of God has the antidote. The word of God has the nutrients. The word of God has the antibody. That everything you need to cause your liver to function, your heart to function, your kidneys to function, everything a part of your body can live because you have the word of God that has the power of God to cause your body to live. That's why Paul wrote Romans. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I mean, there is a power that's in God's word. And if you feed on the word of God, your body will live. Glory to God. I'm telling you, you are walking the life of God. I encourage you to get in the Word, if not every day, every other day, as it relates to divine healing. You got to live. It's the Word of God that's going to keep you living. Do you believe it tonight? Do you believe that the Word will cause you to live? Do you believe that the Word, because remember, it's a higher source. It's higher than anything you can imagine. The Bible said that He would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think according to the power that dwells on the inside of you. There is an anointing from God that's through the word of God that will cause everything in your body that did not work. It will begin to operate. Glory to God. Receive that anointing tonight. I, I'm telling you, I sense the anointing of God. My God that's on me, I know it's coming through the television screen. It's coming through the airways. Glory to God. If you receive that, it will correct everything that's in your body right now. Matter of fact, let me start. Prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person that is listening, that is watching me through this broadcast tonight. I curse sickness and I curse disease. I command blood pressure to be normal. I command sugar to be normal. I command cholesterol to be normal. God, I command every part of their body to function. I command their heart to function properly. Lungs, I command to get in line. Everything will get in line according to the word of Almighty God. Father, you told us, let not the word depart out of our eyes, for it is life unto our flesh. And Father, I thank you for the life of God that is going in our natural mortal bodies right now. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is mortifying, is causing our bodies to be alive tonight. So I thank you, Father, bodies being alive. Minds being regulated according to the word of God. Father, I bless you tonight. I bless you tonight. Thank you for individual bodies being healed. Jesus, you are a healer. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord that heals thee tonight. So, Father, I thank you for every person receiving that healing. Go ahead right now. Go ahead and by faith say, I receive that anointing. Come on. There is an anointing. I'm telling you, I am called by God to release an anointing for your body to be healed. God has raised me up for such a time in this, in these last days, to give a revelation of divine healing. And if you receive the anointing of God, God will correct everything that's not corrected in your life. Glory to God. If you receive that, I need you to shout somebody. Shout. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, God is in the healing business. My time is already up. Glory to God. I, I'm telling you, we don't have enough time within a broadcast to get the word of God out. But I appreciate all of you. I appreciate most of all my CPM partners. CPM partners, you are the ones that are sowing, uh, uh, sowing monthly to us. I appreciate you. We're praying for you. Thank you so much. You're sending your gifts and donations in, and we receive them. Thank you so much uh, for, for the email letter letting us know uh, how you, this ministry is, is blessing you. And I just want to encourage you, if you're interested in becoming a CPM partner, our announcer will put that information back up on the screen where you can go up at www.clintonpotters.org. That's www.clintonpotters.org. Uh, uh, and you can get some information how, uh, how to become a CPM partner. I mean, what is partnership? I'm telling you, it's people like you. They say, you know what? I want to help you to get the gospel out. I want you to help to get the gospel 
to the nations of the world. Will you help me? Will you pray about that tonight? Amen. Will you pray about that? Amen. There's no gift too large. Definitely no gift too small. Amen. Well, the Lord Jesus shall lead on your heart to do. We ask you to go ahead and do that because I believe there's an anointing of God in these last days to see people live. I am an ambassador of living. Glory to God. I am an ambassador for living in these last days. God got a future for you. He got a plan for you. He wants you to live a long, healthy life according to the Word of God. So according to the Word of God, we bless God tonight. And remember, Jesus wants you well. God bless you.